morning everyone. So today we are going to discuss about freshwater aquaculture. Freshwater aquaculture refers to raising and breeding aquatic animals like fish, shrimp, crabs, shellfish, etc. and plants for economic purposes by the use of ponds, reservoirs, lakes, rivers, and other inland waterways, including brackish water, which play an important role in the aquaculture industry. So, freshwater aquaculture is an important source of protein worldwide because aquaculture means raising and breeding aquatic animals in fresh water. So, in Southeast Asia, aquaculture in freshwater lakes contributes significantly to the economy and to reductions in poverty and nutritional insecurity. It reduces poverty and nutritional insecurity because aquaculture is we raise and breed aquatic animals for consumption and for livelihood or economic purposes like for selling. Freshwater aquaculture in the Philippines, a presidential decree by President Marcos in 1973, Presidential Decree 43-A, targeting the construction of small fish ponds, later consolidated with other related decrees into Presidential Decree 704 on 1975, sanctioned, sanctioned an accelerated development of fisheries for resources. A boost in production from fish farms ensued, meaning accelerated development of fisheries resources and boost in production from fish farms it ensued is that the decree um, give importance and more focus on the development of fisheries resources in the Philippines. Freshwater aquaculture practices. So there are different um, aquaculture practices the first one is pond culture this is a very popular aquaculture production method with many aquatic species cultured in ponds to have a successful pond production ponds must be properly sited and built with careful assessment of water availability quantity and quality so these are the examples of ponds for pond culture. So there are two types of pond culture, the monoculture and the polyculture. So the monoculture is said to be less common, meaning not um, being done or less common to um, fish farming. This is mainly carnivorous species, mandarin fish like yellowtail catfish and snakehead and the other one is the omnivorous species tilapia and white leg shrimp carnivorous species means um, an animal eating meat or an aquatic animal eating meat and the omnivorous species is an aquatic animal or animals that eat um, both meat and other food the next one is the polyculture this is the most common or commonest species combinations may be major carps carp species with catfish meat and crab and carp species so the next type or practice is the cage culture this is being done in rivers, lakes, and reservoirs. Mandarin fish and Chanel catfish is being um, raised and bred here. So, cage culture is an aquaculture involves the growing of fishes in existing water resources while being enclosed in a net cage which allows free flow of water 
So these are the examples of cage culture, wherein a fish farmer make um, net cages for the fishes so that it will allow free flow of water. The next one is the rice fish culture. This is an integrated rice field or rice field or pond complex where fish are grown concurrently or alternately with rice. Fish may be deliberately stocked or may enter fields naturally from surrounding waters, waterways when flooding occurs or rice field fisheries or a bit of both. So these are the examples of rice fish culture. Sometimes um, after the harvesting, the, um, the farmers um, breed or raise fish in the most uh, water portion of the rice field. And then they grow fish there for their um, consumption and also for selling. So next is the culture-based fisheries. These are often conducted in small water bodies, perennial and or seasonal, that retain water for at least six to eight months of the year. Culture-based fisheries are stock enhancement practices in water bodies that are generally incapable of supporting sustainable fisheries through self-recruiting fish populations and where the stock is managed and owned, either individually or collectively. So culture-based culture fisheries is perennial and seasonal. So I think this is in rural areas where a um, group of people or an individual conduct um, a kind of aquaculture, freshwater aquaculture, which, which is the culture-based fisheries. So these are the examples of uh, culture-based fisheries where are there are groups of people helping each other in harvesting the aquatic animals or the culture-based fishes in the um, bodies of water, which is fresh water. So the next one is the pen culture. So this is defined as raising of fish in a volume of water enclosed on all sides except bottom, permitting, permitting the free circulation of water at least from one side. This system can be considered a hybrid between pond culture and cage culture. So it is said that pen culture is more hybrid because it needs a more volume of water like these are the examples of a pen culture wherein the fish farmer make pen for the fishes and they put pens from the sides in the four sides of the pen culture so that there will be um a high volume of water where, where the fish can be grown in that area. So that are the types of freshwater aquaculture. So the importance of freshwater aquaculture. Freshwater aquaculture systems ranging from intensive pond or cage-based systems to extent ex Extensive stocking of enclosed water bodies play an important role for the nutrition and livelihood of rural people. Often, these systems are integrated with some form of agricultural making use of farm byproducts. So, freshwater aquaculture is very important in rural areas because it serves as the to maintain the nutritional uh, needs of the people because they are producing aquatic animals for their consumption and livelihood because the excess of the uh, fish that they harvested can be sold 
in the market for livelihood or further or form of earning money. So that's all about freshwater aquaculture. So these are the references that you may use. I hope you learned something for this video. So thank you very much.